Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Long. With me, as always, is my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, and gunner, Jacob Gloth. How are you doing today, Jacob? I'm, I'm good. I'm alive. Breathing. Breathing, just barely. Definitely. As always. I mean, I'm in a similar situation. All right. Um, I've got a fun little pitch, I think. Because um, I've, I've been in the, the UK for a little bit. Um... And I've noticed that uh, British Netflix is vastly superior to American Netflix. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, there's a lot more stuff on it. There's a lot more like, and because weird of that. Stuff. I found this cool little show called Final Space. Mm-hmm. Don't know if you've seen it, but it's like an animated space show. Um, and from that, I was like, I kind of want to do a space show again. Um, and I was like, well, how do you? You know, I've done so many space shows. With some I haven't done. I thought, whoa, haven't done a parody of Star Wars yet, except we have multiple times. So we're gonna do that again. <laughs> Wait, no, we haven't done a parody of Star. We did a real Star Wars show. I've, I've done a lot of Star Wars shows, but this is this is not literally Star Wars. It's a parody. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. Making fun of a few things with that. So the show is called uh, Space Opera. I like that. Yep. <laughs> So we're going straight in with the okay. very genre-specific title. Mm-hmm. Um, our main character, her name is Devin, Devin Sand Runner. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Devin Sand Runner. <laughs> yep. I like um, this. Now it's gonna it's gonna diverge a little bit. She's a young mechanic on an asteroid city. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a she's daring and reckless. Um, but she cares deeply about others and does whatever she can f- for other people. Does she have uh, a little robot buddy? Uh, sort of. We'll get to that. She has a... Oh, I guess I could just tell you now. She has um, a friend. Her only friend on this asteroid city is the um, repair station's AI, whose name is Al. Okay. Because, you know, AI, but he thought it was an L. Yeah. Um, he got confused. So... Al is uh, is the AI that's that like works the mechanic shop with her. Mm-hmm. You know he you know does all like the AI stuff. You know all the stuff that you can't make a human do because it's too tedious or you know involves a lot of math or something. Finances, but, yeah, yeah, that. yeah. You know moves big cranes and stuff so that she can do the hands on work. Um, and Al has a problem. He was not uh, given a a purpose module. So, like, he has no purpose, essentially. Mm. But it's not, like, a sort of sad thing where he's, like, searching for a purpose. Yeah. Uh, instead, he's, like, constantly... He's very positive about it, I'll say. He's constantly trying to figure out what his arc is. <laughs> so, throughout the show, he'd be like, is this my arc? Is this the moment? Is this, like, this am I going to become more human? And Devin's going to be like, did you want to become more human? And he's like, well, not exactly, but, like, I could, you know? That would be something I could do. It's, it's something that robots do sometimes. They want to be human. I've watched Pinocchio. I know. I'd love to have throughout the show, like, moments where Devin progresses as a character. Mm-hmm. Al tries to like butt in and be like, "Well, this is my arc too." I'm here. You know, I I grew a little bit or something. I feel like we all learned a little bit something about ourselves today. And then she's just like, "What? You weren't even there. You were doing what? You were waiting for the cable <laughs> guy. Even... You weren't. I w- I went on a so- this was a solo adventure. Like, but I feel like we all learned something today. Yeah." Fine, Al. Fine. Did you? Whatever. Did the cable guy show up? No. 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 But I learned patience. That's my arc. I've learned how to wait for others. You're a robot. That's like your whole thing. <laughs> yeah, you do that all the time. Um, um, going back to Devin for a second. Um, a reoccurring thing about her is that she loves Hasbury Lemon, which is a drink in this universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's going to be like, you know, a reoccurring joke is that she is constantly trying to find Hasbury Lemon in the galaxy, mm-hmm. but it's been discontinued. Oh, okay. Like, a- so it doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore and you can only find it like in very rare places, like in a random convenience store at a gas station that has like a stock that's, you know, super old. At Space 7-Eleven. 
Yeah, I'd space them. Maybe yeah, we could have a crossover episode crossover. where she gets Hasbury Lemon from there. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, you you know why that was discontinued, right? And she's like, because it's too delicious. And then she finishes a bottle. And then, you know, they're like, no, it, it's, it messes it's with like your genetic really code. It'll burn your insides. It messes with yeah. your genetic code. And then she, we look back and she's like, got purple polka dots on her face and like is growing a tentacle where her nose used to be. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be, it'd be funny if there's like some weird effect like it gives her like purple dots in her arm for a few minutes mm -hmm. Whenever she drinks it. Yeah, but you know, she drinks it anyway But she you know she can't get like the long Standing effects from it because she can't get enough of it yeah. But if she had enough of it She would just continue to drink it and you know die or something, but she can only ever get one every Season or something one every couple that could of be months. the thing at the end of every season she gets um a Hasbury lemon. Okay. Or I would also enjoy it if like maybe she finishes it. She, she has one last one in her first episode. Yeah. She. That's that's how the story story starts. She's like ah, uh, glug 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 glug. Purple. She's like, mm, you know what? I I'm really thirsty. She opens the fridge for a second one. Looks and there's none there. She's like, oh, yeah. Mm. That, yeah, that could be how the show starts. And then, like, she's like, Al, where are the Hasbury Lemon? And he's like, robotic voice is like, sorry, uh, the shipping, that was your last one in the, in the uh, you know, the huge load you got last time. Yeah. We'll need to order some more. And she's like, oh, how come you haven't ordered any more yet? She's like, oh, it's been discontinued. She's like, what? Discontinued? How could this be? You're like, hmm. And that could be, you know, the beginning of the show. Maybe. Nice comedic opening. Yeah, maybe each time the we talk about Hasbury Lemon, we read a different side effect that it does. <laughs> like a different yeah. thing that it does to you. It's like, it was discontinued because it made everyone's fingernails fall out. Huh. Are you Are you okay? She's like, no, what yeah. the hell? Why? I was fine. And then we just look and one's like hanging off and she's like, don't worry it's about fine. it. It's okay. I'm thirsty. All right, so from there, the, the meat of the show mm -hmm. is um, Devin is going to be uh, repairing ships and sort of uh, longing for an escape. Like, she doesn't want to live on this asteroid planet, but she can't afford a ship. She can only afford to repair them. Mm -hmm. So nice little irony there. She has to repair ships, but can't actually, you know, get in one and leave. Yeah. Um, and then a very damaged ship called the Express parks in her bay. Um, it has, like, you know, blaster burns on the side. It's clearly been attacked. Um, mm -hmm. it, uh, it like just, you know, popped out of the sky. So it just exited, you know, hyperspace or whatever we want to call it in this universe. I haven't thought about it, to be honest. Hyperspace um, is fine. See, I don't want to call it that because that's what they always call it in sci-fi shows. You're right. Let's call it, um, um, light bending. It light bended in. I was, Cause it's like bending light. I was um, going to say like, um, have you seen space balls? No, like, no, it's. Well, yeah, but I don't remember what they call they it. They call it, they go to light speed, and then they go faster than light speed, and that was, uh, into, uh, like, it's like a, a kind of, like, tartan. What's tartan called? What's tartan called? What are you talking about? What's tartan? You know tartan. What's that called? I'm sorry, what listeners, he's lost his mind. Scott? He's just talking to himself in the corner. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Uh, whatever. You know, tartan. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, tartan speed. I'm gonna call it light bending. Okay, that's uh, good. Because that makes some sense scientifically, but not really. Um, and so he's gonna light bend in, um, like right above the station, which is like you know not probably legal, um, and then or safe because you know you could hit something. Yeah. So then he drops down, uh, lands. It's the ship's called the Express, and yeah. out comes. A man in his late fifties, Wilhelm Reacher, who is essentially the uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, Ben Kenobi of uh, the show, um, and he asks for her help. He okay. is the leader of the resistance, and he explains to her that he's running from uh, the Confederation, and they're trying to uh, chase him down. They caught him. Um, they caught him uh, leading like a big attack against the Confederation uh, before he could get there to meet up with the big fleet. And he's been on the run, and uh, his, mm -hmm. uh, like, whatever it's called, um, light bending engine, light engine, we'll call it, 
has been damaged um, and he got jumped randomly somewhere mm-hmm. in the galaxy and this is where oh, he yeah. is. Uh, and But there, you know, the other people are on pursuit of him, in pursuit yeah. of him. And so she starts helping repair and um, he like notices a few things about her and um, suddenly, he's, suddenly he's like, you fit the exact description of a prophecy from where I'm from. And he's like, she's like, what? Um, he's like, you're the, I think you might be the chosen one. And she's like, oh, that sounds cool. And I, and I was like, did the, this, um, say, say anything about a fun, loving robot buddy in the prophecy? You know, some sort of arc for my character. Mm-hmm. And also plaid. It was plaid. I was thinking of plaid. <laughs> plaid space. No, we're not doing They that. went from hyperspace into plaid space. Okay. That's funny. Maybe we can have a tartan joke in there just for your continual. Just for my own lunacy. Yeah. I'm a crazy person, listeners. Yeah, you are. Um, crazy like a fox. Okay. Well, um, like anyway, they um, he sort of says this to her, and she's been looking for a way out her whole life and sort of a bigger... Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to say purpose because I've already said that so many times, but purpose. She wants meaning in her life. And yeah, she wants an arc. Yeah, she wants an arc, but she, you know, she's not desperately searching for one like the other guy, but she, you know, sort of subconsciously wants one. Um, yeah. And she helps him escape, and so they'll they'll get out of there just in time before the Confederation gets there to kill him and such. Um, mm-hmm. And they begin a, a journey across um, their part of their sector of the galaxy, trying to repair the uh, light engine while also mm-hmm. fleeing from the Confederation and their commander, who's named Commander Dredd. He's the guy that's in charge of chasing them down. Dredd. That's a cool name. Commander Dredd. I know it's meant to be, it's just like, it's the most it's cliche. scary, yeah. dark name you could get, but I like Commander Dredd. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, the point um, is, it's supposed to be cliche. Um, yeah, but uh, could it be, I, I just had an idea, because I know in like all sci-fi media, it's like, oh, they got blasters or lasers yeah. or phasers or whatever. Can we just have like they're just guns like they shoot lasers but it's just like a normal earth gun and they're like he's got a gun so i think it'd be funny if they just like they don't talk, like, call them phasers or blasters or anything they still shoot lasers it's just it's a gun he's got a gun like a normal earth glock gun but it shoots a laser or it doesn't shoot but it a shoots la- it shoots i think it'd lasers. be fun to bo- have both because i feel like they don't usually do that in sci-fi yeah. media but like, yeah. it'd be cool to have both ballistic weapons or projectile mm-hmm. weapons, like mm-hmm. missiles and lasers. Because I, I can see the reasons why you'd want to use each one. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, balli- well, maybe lasers don't work very well on on in an atmosphere. Maybe but they yeah. work way better in space. Yeah, and maybe that. like yeah. you use different ones at different times. Like if you if you're shooting like a ship that has a shield. Mm-hmm. Um. You'd want to use lasers to destroy the shield, and then yeah, you want to you use, sh- you know, missiles and uh, like a ballistic weapon, a projectile weapon, to take out the armor of a ship. I, I, I just think it would be funny if like everyone else is like, she, oh my god, there's a phaser, or he's got like a Mach 16 blaster rifle, and then uh, Devin's just like, he's got a fucking gun. Everybody run. <laughs> Holy shit! He's just got a normal gun. He's gonna shoot me. Also, I was thinking uh, maybe they're like the plan is to leave Al. You know, because well, I'm see, imagining I was going he's to, like um, the ship gets damaged, um, mm-hmm. and the AI of the ship is destroyed. Oh, so no. uh, that's you know what's his, uh, Al becomes the AI of the ship and he's really excited for that because he's like this is my arc this is I'm moving up yes. in the world of go- no, he so now he's it. like the ship's AI and uh, has control of all the parts of the ship so he does like the flying and stuff because I think mm-hmm. it's in like Star Wars and, and and things like that it's like you're in the future the people shouldn't really be doing the flying it should be like an AI yeah so you it's, know Al flies the ship and like fires the weapons and stuff and they can take manual control if they want but you know, Al, mm-hmm. Al's got it. Maybe he gets offended if they do. 
like, oh, okay, you think you can do it better? Fine. And he turns himself off. Like, the oxygen stops working. Yeah. And, like, they just they're like, oh, please, please, we need it. <laughs> please, Dal, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna... I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, fine. Turns it all back on, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like the idea of me. having Al as, like, this... Um, uh, presence that like you can hear but he's not actually like a physical thing like he doesn't have a body it's just like he's the yeah. ship or he'll be in like the helmets of the people so you know they can relay uh -huh. information he's but he doesn't turn into a big robot with a cape no. who can pick up Thor's hammer no he's not vision he doesn't do that he gets maybe he gets a body later but it's like a a different body than he wanted yeah it's like really shitty or something he got the body of like a milk of like a dairy cow. Oh my god! It's <laughs> just like, god damn it! When I said I wanted to be ma a mammal, this is not what I meant. Yeah. God. Damn. And then, um, or I guess I maybe I should explain this first. So the resistance, their goal is to um, reestablish the protectorate. So originally in the galaxy, there was a uh, some the government was called the protectorate. And it was like a monarchy, and yeah. um, King High Spear was the leader of the monarchy. And mm -hmm. Reacher tells uh, Devin the story of the monarchy and how they were great and like you know loved everyone, were so helpful and cared of all the people yeah. and you know protected the peace in the galaxy, the Protectorate. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, these like local corrupt oligarchs. Uh, you know, created a coup and uh, overthrew the king, and mm -hmm. um, now the you know the re the resistance is trying to bring back the monarchy yeah. and defeat the evil oligarchs that are in charge of the confederation. Yeah, and she's like, "What's an oligarch?" Yeah, she, we don't have that here. No, no, she just we lives on an asteroid in like the middle of nowhere, so she has like no idea yeah. what's happening in the galaxy. Yeah. The people that stop by are like galactic truck drivers, and so she's like used to repairing like crappy old like you know storage ships yeah and she's like that she hears the things that the they tell her and like listens intently but like most of the time it's just bullshit yeah because you know they're truck drivers and they're having a, a, a bit of fun with this you know lady and i like to think that her part of the galaxy is like on the very edge so yeah. she lives in like the wild west essentially she lives in the Ken she lives in the kentucky of space yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, and yeah. from there, we're going to sort of um, either at the end of this season or, uh, you know, the middle, somewhere that's a good climactic point. Um, they're going to find a way to repair the light engine. And uh, she's going to, you know, they're going to be like, okay, we just need to get to um, like this part of space. So it's not like if you have a light engine in this universe, you can't just be anywhere and go somewhere yeah. yeah there's like sort of uh like points that you should jump at so it's quicker if that mm -hmm. makes sense like you know how when it's people safer i don't i don't have a scientific explanation for it but i wanted to create sort of like travel points um so like uh you you want to go here so it's it's less of a distance between you and the next place um yeah i think of it like how um people always launch rocket ships from uh, or like you know spaceships from like the center of the earth like the middle near the equator because there's it's easier there you know what I mean yeah so there's certain points in the in the universe where it's easier to jump from one sector to another sector yeah that makes sense I think it would be like also we've cleared all the debris but obviously it was the actually it was the current government that cleared all the debris the monarchy the protector didn't give a shit but they like made it so that you know if you're fly if you're light bending and you know you go near a rock and it goes through you it, it does it doesn't have the chance to go through your window and kill literally everyone on board yeah, something like that like maybe there's some sort of galactic yeah. barrier some sort of mm -hmm. something that disturbs the light bending process i don't know we'd have to figure out like an actual fake scientific it's reason some, some fake si yeah some bullshit have to be real science, science can be fake science um anyway yeah, we're not they have to Nolan. get to this point right and so they are but commander dread is you know, on their ass, and um, mm -hmm. right before they're able to jump, um, Devin uh, like sacrifices herself to help, um, you know, Captain Reacher or uh, mm -hmm. you know Wilhelm Reacher get 
you know, to the point so he can help the rebellion. I didn't catch that the first time. I like his name. What Wilhelm Reacher? Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's you know it's like classic. Classic Star Wars. Uh, yeah, just a interesting name. Um, and so she uh, helps him and uh, takes uh, Al with her. So Al and her get mm-hmm. captured by the uh, like by Commander Dread, while you know uh, the other guy, um, Reacher, Captain Reacher, he uh, like hops into a like a uh, escape pod, but the escape pod has the light bending engine on it, so that's how he's yeah. able to escape. And so he light bends back to the fleet, and they're captured. And this is sort of the turning point in the show. So she gets on the ship and um, expects to be tortured. But they put her in, like, actually a pretty nice cell. And mm-hmm. um, she's like, this is weird, you know? Maybe they let Al stay with her. They, like, put Al in, like, a robot yeah, they just, like, can. download her into so her he helmet or something. And so he's just yeah. in her helmet now. Um, and she's like, this is really strange. You know, they're being nice to me. My meals are good. I thought he was, I was going to be tortured and stuff. Like, throughout the show, Reacher's going to tell her, like, if they catch you, they'll torture you and kill you. Um, it's going to be awful. And that's when Commander Dread comes in. Um, Commander Dread is like four eight, and he's like, um, you know, like some alien creature. Kind of looks like a like kind of like um, what's his name from Guardians of the Galaxy? Rocket Raccoon. Rocket Raccoon, but like not you know, part like he's like a cuddly teddy yeah, bear. This guy. He's just a big nice. So Commander guy. Dread is like a is like a little small teddy uh-huh. bear that's like really nice and. Um, you know, obviously she didn't expect this. Uh, and he starts talking to her and she learns, you know, what actually has been happening. Yeah. So this guy, Captain Reacher, is the leader of the um, the resistance, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but the story is a little different from Commander Dredd's point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, Commander Dredd's telling her like, oh, okay, so that's not true what he told you um king high spear the commander of the leader of the protectorate he had a regent um because he was incompetent and his regent was uh captain reacher the guy that just left um and he was awful he was the leader yeah and uh, he was like a tyrannical you know awful person Mm -hmm. that you know enslaved people and created the protectorate which was like this evil government that essentially is the empire from star wars um and we are the confederate who overthrew them you know we were all like the local governments um that all decided to get together and take out you know the evil overlord so they had essentially like a star wars e resistance before they did a star wars one they did a star wars yes we could call it that that'd be funny (laughs) it would (laughs) they'd be like so you did a star wars and he'll be like what she's like ah never mind yeah we did a star war there were a few wars we did a star wars you, you might say we did a Star War. She's like, why would you call it that? And he's like, I don't know. It just seems to fit, you know, because there's stars and there's yeah. a war. Something like that. I don't know. And she's like, fuck, I just helped him. And, uh, you know, he's a bad guy. And now he's going back to his big fleet. And he's going to, you know, take over the galaxy because he, uh, you know, he was separated from his fleet. But now he's back with them. So he's back in control of his army. Yeah. So uh, she's got a... She ends up joining the the, con, the Fet Confederation. Confederation. Um, Maybe the and a side thing that I didn't mention. You know how she said he said he was the or Reacher said she was the chosen one, right? Yeah. He does that to everyone. Is that okay. what he's going to tell her? He okay. goes around. The, his army is called the Chosen Ones. The and chosen And he goes people. around to all these people oh, and he tells them that they're the chosen one. Oh. So he gets them all hyped up, and now they think they're like they're like a cult, you know. <laughs> They all think they're special and have been chosen for this purpose to like restore the protectorate. Oh Jesus! And so he's got all these young, um, feverant children, mm-hmm. essentially, like willing to die for him in this cause because they think they're special. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a nice play on the, that the is, Star Wars. I enjoy one. that. So we got and like I'm... a evil Obi Wan who's going around the galaxy telling everyone they're the chosen one and recruiting them to his cause. Mm-hmm. And I'm imagining the like monarch is yeah. still alive but he's like you know centuries of inbreeding and bad you know genes and just like he's all hooked up to like robot stuff and he's like yeah maybe we can have like a darth vader breathing but instead of sounding like intimidating it it's sounds like 
really awful. Like you're like, is he out? Is he okay? Mm-hmm. It's, it doesn't sound like that respirator is working okay. It sounds like they're they're pumping something wrong in there. Yeah, and they're like, you know, maybe a couple episodes in, they're like, they fish something out, and it's like. It's like, no, there's a little toy soldier stuck in one of the holes. One of his, his, yeah. <laughs> sounds perfect now. <laughs> like, mm. But yeah. Um, so um, now she's on the, the ship, which is called the BT. Uh, she obviously learned that the local government, um, or like these, this is all the local governments in like a big council fighting mm-hmm. against the old oppressive empire um, and how they deposed you know, like an evil king and the regent. And so now... Um, she is trying to stop him from Reacher, Captain Reacher, from you know destroying the fragile Confederate government. So she's gonna be working with Commander Dredd, the, the mm-hmm. lovable teddy bear. Lovable um, teddy bear. Yep. They all should have British accents, because in Star Wars, if you have a British accent, that means you're a space Nazi. Oh. So I think it'd be funny if uh, they all had British accents, but they were all like, you know, oh I'm sorry, you know, the very apologetic British. You know, stiff upper lip. They give her tea, like in cakes and all that. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, it's lovely. You know, mm-hmm. I think it'd be fun. And I think it'd be interesting to have a joke where um, they had communications with Commander Dread before, like mm-hmm. she met them, and they all sounded like really dark and evil. And she yeah. asked him about that, like, why did your you you send us so evil over the space phone? And he's like, oh, sorry, that our our microphones are kind of broken. They make yeah. you sound a lot deeper than you are. Um, I've been telling Marcus to fix that, but um, he just got moved to marketing, so yeah. you know he's a bit you know he's he's kind of up his own ass now. They're they're trying to sell those Commander Dread toys. Yeah, on, on the you know on no, nobody's it's, buying them because no one actually <laughs> knows who I am. It's, it's a bad it's a bad a bad choice. We bought like a million of them. <laughs> we seriously we colonized a whole planet to have to just to make these toys. Haven't sold a single one. Do you want one? <laughs> They're free. You can even take ten. We use them as paperweights around the office. <laughs> we use them to stuff the fucking pillows. Wait, there's a hole in the spaceship. You just fill it just with. Put the dreads. fucking bobblehead toy there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so the rest of the show, which um, didn't really delve too much into, is just her working with her new um, crew to defeat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Captain Reacher and the Insurgency. Maybe the Insurgency is all humans. Okay, the, so we could have and, like, yeah, that'd be good. And the Confederacy, and like, they're all humans, and I don't know if they should have a specific accent or not, but they're all... They're just, all Australian. Yeah, they're all Australian kind of monochrome people, and maybe you go to uh, uh, the Confederacy, and it's all different, you know governments and different people and the different cultures and sometimes there's you know a little bit of tension because they've got different values but yeah. they, they use the power of democracy to solve their problems yeah it's like yeah. but that's sort of their their problem is that um they're they're like a confederation so they have to vote on everything and they don't have like a um centralized army mm-hmm. so it's hard for them to fight back against um captain reacher and his you know army of uh, chosen ones because you know they're all unified he's the direct commander he has complete yeah. control of everything so he can you know he usually they'll be outnumbered when they fight him okay so i think it's cool. interesting to have to set up this scenario where the insurgency is actually stronger than the government mm-hmm. um because it's a good reverse of the star wars role i think yeah but it's just you know but the the insurgency has the or the um, government has the the power of the people they just don't have the military might and maybe it's like all one ai on like the entire fleet of uh, the insurgency is one uniform ai yeah so it can move like, and do everything at, you know mm-hmm. at the same time but together in the confederacy it's like each ship has a different ai and you know yeah and they all they people. don't even communicate through the ai they like you know communicate from person to person mm-hmm. yeah, well, yeah. The AI is the AIs are seen as uh, another crew member, whereas in the insurgency they're seen as tools. You know, yeah. maybe maybe he's rude to Al the whole t- trip, and yeah. she's like she's picking up hints that maybe he's not exactly the guy he says he is. Mm-hmm. 
I also think it would be funny if, like, when they were leaving, like, the first time to escape, uh, they're like, maybe the AI on his ship isn't broken totally, and, like, she's working on it and fixing it, and they have to get out, and, um, the captain's like, you know, we can't bring Al, sorry, whatever, let's go. And, uh, Al has snuck in onto the ship, like, uploaded himself and downloaded the AI that was there into the mechanic shop. Oh, so and he so, switches them. Yeah, he so switches the old AI like, the mechanic shop. But he's got to do, like, a, he's, he's just, like, he does a voice. Because I'm imagining Al has his own particular voice, and then this AI is like, Hello, my name is Slop. And I am the ship's AI. Yeah, so maybe this AI has an Australian accent, and Al, like, is obviously faking an Australian accent when he's downloaded in. Um, but the other AI is, is maybe broken, and so maybe they'll return to mm-hmm. that asteroid um, at the beginning of the second season or something to sort of figure out, like, oh, we need to kind of we need to figure out Captain Reacher's plans. We can go yeah. grab his AI that he left at that asteroid. We get there and it's like this broken AI trying to repair ships and stuff, but it's like doing things really badly. And there's a bunch of people complaining about how this AI can't repair. Yeah, for it's anything. like I don't, it doesn't know left from right. How the fuck is it gonna build a spaceship? Yeah, yeah. it's just like destroying people's ships because it doesn't know what to do. Or maybe it's like, uh, uh, and then that's how it started and then nobody went to that AI anymore like everyone went to a different mechanic so yeah. it's just like crazy like repairing like trying to put like ships together but it's just using like wrong parts and it's like hello yeah. customers yay and it's just fucking crazy that'd be fun everybody loves a crazy AI yeah a cray eye like a yep. crown like a, the guy from treasure Island, you know, you read Treasure Island. No, no I didn't. You've never read the movie. You've seen the guy who's on the who's left on the island, and he goes crazy. He just wants cheese. So he wants. Treasure. Don't we all? Anyway, that's all I got for uh, space opera. Um, that's the show. I'd like that's it. how it goes. Uh, it wasn't the most developed of pitches, but it was something. It was something. I enjoyed it. I yeah, I liked it. I thought. When you said the title, I thought it was going to be about a character who is trying to become an opera singer. Oh, in space. No, I was just I was just doing the genre. Okay, space opera. I like it. But calling it that, I thought it'd be funny. It is funny. Um, yeah, I think it'll be good. It sounds fun. And maybe try to think. Maybe I, I could I could either call it um, if we want to really make it a comedic parody title, I could call it. Um, uh, 3021 a space opera that's I like that 3021 a space opera a space opera you know what we should call it Rick and Morty that's yep. that's my original season title season 5 season 9 Rick and Morty I don't think anyone would be misled or upset I think everyone. Go that. I think it'd be funny. I don't even. I'll think, put that in the thumbnail. Think, everyone will be so happy. I don't think people. Would, I think we might not even get sued. I think we should call it season Rick and Morty season five episode one, uh, secret big reveal. It's here. Morty's dead. R- Rick's um, wife is back from. Yep. Space. She's the new side character. Yep. But it's, it's Rick and his wife. Rick and Bird Person, new show. I like that. I like the pitch. Anything else? What, Rick and Morty or that my show? No, your show. Rick and Morty's okay. fine. Uh, I like your show. I would watch your show more. Okay. Think- well, uh, thanks everyone for watching. I'm sorry for the uh, for the the low energy this time, but I think next time there'll be some there'll be higher energy. So much energy. I'm gonna fucking plug myself into the wall. I'm gonna energize. I'm like a energizer bunny. I'm gonna swallow a whole bunch of batteries. To make okay, sure that it let's not do that. All right, thank you everyone for listening to the Very Reasonable Pilots podcast. I've been your host, Charles Long. With me has always been my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, and gunner, Jacob Gloth. Uh, if you like what you heard here and you want to hear more, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, other places. 
if you're listening in one of those places, give us a like, give us a subscribe, rate the yeah. podcast, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your enemies, tell them all about it. Mm-hmm. Next time you're drunk in a bar, I want you to lean on somebody and just start talking about space. The very small pilots podcast, especially 3021, a space opera, yeah. because that's this episode. Yeah. Just tell them how funny we are. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you all. Goodbye. Stay safe. Bye.